I believe this is our final Any News solo leveling cut content. Salute, Mr. Any News. Thank you for giving me week after week after week of content to just react and farm. God damn, I love being a lazy leech. Now, we do have slime and Mushoku Tensei coming up. And I haven't watched this previous video. So let me know in the comments if you want me to see those videos as well. Let's watch solo leveling episode 12 cut content. This is Sung Janu's build at the end of season one. Okay. A lengthy list of skills and items, along with a new title which he gained upon ascending to that Shadow Monarch status. Conqueror One other. Of adversity, truth. Whoa, this title is given to those who valiantly overcome adversity. Your stats will increase in proportion to the amount of health last fucking bug. It's a percentage, too. It's not a fucking flat stat, you know, fucking you're, you're losing. It's percentage stat increase for every 1% of health lost. That's fucking crazy. Is a fitting title though, since up until now, that's exactly what Sung has been forced to go through. Yeah, like Im imagine there's some busted fucking skill that lets you have like immortality, right? Like, like if you play turn based games, there's like immortality buffs, right? Even if, if you're like lethal health, you're like one HP, but you're still alive until that buff is gone, right? Imagine having something like that, then fucking scaling all your fucking stats off of that dude. I mean, even before he acquired the system and was able to level up, his life as an E rank hunter could only be described as adverse. It's the way he continually pushes forward without any hesitation, though, that showcases just how it is he was able to conquer all that. And it's his display of tenacity in the job quest here that was no different and even far more unyielding. That's what we're going to talk about in this cut content here, along okay. with all the other details left out from the season finale. Very quickly before that, though, Hashtag here's last reminder to check out the level up collection. Yeah, check out his merch. Mugen, so Mugen shirt, cool design. shirt, That's hoodie, hoodie, hoodie shirt. Lots. Okay, all right. Covering chapters 41 to 45 from the manhwa and chapters 49 to 53 from the web novel. After having just defeated Igris, despite Sung's fatigue being at <sighs> defeated 61, he still found his current status fairly manageable. The health he gained from the helmet gave him a bit more wiggle room, and so long as his fatigue still wasn't at 70 yet, he knew he could still fight at full power for hopefully however long was necessary. Obviously, it wasn't long enough, because by the time five minutes had gone and passed, Sung would find himself being suffocated at the bottom Ooh, of the Ooh, that's a of lot of CGI nights. His health nights. was just under 10% now, and it was at this point that he would start remembering all the people who looked down on him. It wasn't just the memories of people like Mr. Kim or Mr. Park, but also the general comments from pretty much everyone. Everybody, yeah. Over. He remembered all the ridicule he once faced while surviving at the bottom, and it was those voices which pushed him to strive for the peak. <laughs> Even you, he was, come on, come sit down on the fucking floor with me like I am every time I show up on the fucking screen. He wasn't going to settle as a C, B, or even A rank hunter, because more than anything, he wanted to stand at the top. He knew exactly how it felt to be the weakest, so now he wanted to be the strongest. This was mostly because power had always been far and away from him, but it was also because an opportunity to prove everyone wrong had presented itself. So, regardless of whether his health was at 10 or 1, Sung was committed to fighting till the end. Even if his muscles tore and his bones turned to dust, he would continue to struggle using every part of his body available to him. Huh. You know, to me, so Anne used to saying, Sung Jin Woo is trying so hard to prove everyone wrong, and the fact that he was always the weakest, he strives to be the strongest now. But to me, I was like, shit, I just gotta last long enough so I can get the fucking, you know, bonus points, so I can get my cool class. That's what I was obsessing over. I don't know, I was, I, 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 at, he is, right, he, he is trying hard so that he can get a good class, but like, the root motivation is like, fuck everyone else, I wanna prove them wrong. But to me, if I was in the situation, I was just thinking, shit, new class, OP class, gotta stack up the bonus points. It was this sudden burst of determination that allowed him to escape the dogpile, but as the fight pressed on and his fatigue neared its limit, the knights which were dropping in only one hit were now starting to take two or three. It was a good way to display how the fatigue started to affect him, since oh. in addition to his mind and body becoming slower, so too did his attacks become weaker in a way that's visibly noticeable. This didn't really bother Sung, though, since no matter how many hits it took, he would just continue to strike until his targets did go That's down. That's a cool panel. Eventually, that number would be at four to five hits, and it was at this point that a countdown would become increasingly apparent to him. It was a countdown he didn't recognize as one for the penalty quest. The daily quest? Penalty quest. Daily penalty quest. Separate countdown. Separate countdown? For what? But instead thought it to be a timer signifying his death. Oh! He misunderstood it was the penalty, but he thought it was for his death. 
This is where the novel takes Sung's determination to a whole new level, since in the face of death, he could only say good. Despite thinking his life would really? end in only a few seconds, not a single part of him was ready to give up yet. This is in contrast to Sung from the Manwa and anime, since in both those you can get a sense of his fear and anxiety. There's a clear worry that this might be the end for him, and it's all the more apparent when he's lying there about to be executed. Sung in the novel never really portrays this worry, and instead only displays that never-give-up attitude. It was an unyielding determination that some might describe as borderline insanity. Like, Sung knew he was about to lose the system, yet the only thing he could think of was how he was going to make use of every last second of it. Even as his body reached that limit in which he couldn't even move anymore, he still found it within him to reach towards the unattainable. There wasn't that shadow version of himself looking down on him as he faced defeat, but I liked this in the anime. I, I enjoyed how they added this, like, previous Sung Jin Wu, right, before the plastic surgery, casting all the anxiety that doubts upon him, right, and then to kind of prove him wrong. But it was, like, a very interesting thing where at the end, it was, like, he got bailed out again, right? It was, like, luck. But he, isn't there, like, a distinction of, like, luck is important, right? Luck is still a component. Sometimes, yes, plot armor kicks in, and obviously Sung Jin Wu is the main character. He's gonna get the fucking penalty quest to get out of here, right? But it's just interesting how every time in these situations, he just kind of gets bailed out. But is it just pure luck, right? It's not like he's not trying. It's not like he's undeserving, right? He, he's positioned himself to get lucky. He's been grinding. I think he deserves it. Sometimes lucky break like this, I don't think deters from the overall... Um, aspect of like earning something through determination instead just himself and his own thoughts of how he felt he could still fight for a little bit longer now the manwa does add its own extra bit with his shadow version and it's oh, a simple oh. statement of how sung just wasn't ready yet oh i thought the manwa didn't do it or the webson didn't do it maybe the novel didn't do it it was a declaration that he was still miles away from what he wanted damn that's jin ho this is jinna probably and if he truly wanted to attain it He'd have to kill more, make sacrifices, and even mm, abandon mom, those probably. to him. I believe this to be Sung coming to terms with what he's been avoiding, since up until now it's been as if the system has been pushing him towards this. It never outright says that he has to do these things, but as Sung said himself, the stronger he gets, the more detached he feels. Right. So, though he may want to keep the parts of him that makes him human, perhaps deep down he knows he'll eventually have to abandon them. I think this is where Cha Heian comes in. The most cliche thing of a main character becoming, like, going to the dark side, right? Who's there to balance it? It's like a love interest that's there to, like, maintain the balance. Not gonna be Juhi. Probably gonna be Cha Heian. Could be Jinna. Most likely Cha Heian, though. Perhaps this was just his deepest fear manifesting in front of him. In any case, the countdown which, as we saw, saved his life would transport Sung 90 fatigue and all. I don't think the anime portrays just how unbearable 90 plus fatigue is though since he kind of just got up and put yeah. himself into shape. Yeah, he looked again. fine here. As for Sung in the novel, the only thing that I was looking at were his fucking knuckles, right? Put himself into shape again. Ugh, ugh, his knuckles were getting so worn down like you could like see it looked like fucking holes, huh? As for Sung in the novel, 90 fatigue meant he couldn't even lift a finger. The core effects were difficult breathing and incredibly strenuous movements, so- My immersion is ruined. I cannot believe they ruined the anime. No, I don't think it really matters, right? It's, it's not a big detail, but I don't know. It's not, it's not too big a detail, but cool to know that happened. For Sung, that meant getting up was pretty much impossible. In fact, just opening the shop and drinking the potion was tremendously difficult. So much so that he had to do the entire thing lying down. It was once he did that he could finally move again, but- Would be hilarious in the anime if they showed this by him not being able to get up but able to open the menu while staying down barely clicking not even clicking it with his finger maybe with his fucking tongue right fucking putting his tongue to buy the potion and then the potion just dropping on his face and not even using his hands because he can't even lift a finger because 90 fatigue i think that would have been fucking hilarious and him just like struggling to get the potion out of the fucking you know the shop menu the potion just falling on his face and him trying to fucking drink it after it broke on his face. Because his health was below 10%, recovery by potion just wasn't possible anymore. You see, just like how healing magic can't heal injuries if they're too severe. Right, in the anime they mentioned it, right? The HP was so low, potions couldn't even do it anymore and you had to rely on auto-generation. So too did health potions not restore health if Sung was missing too much. It was good he figured out such a mechanic right now, since if there was ever a time when he really needed to drink a potion, 
doing so above 10% was now essential. Okay. Now, it was once the centipedes started to appear that some would find them a lot less intimidating. They're orange the names now. being that, despite their red names, their movements just seemed so incredibly slow now. Were they not orange? I swear to God, I was like, okay, what are the centipedes' names now? And I'm, I, I was focused, because, like, how much have we grown? Are the centipedes, like, weaker now? It was fucking orange. But maybe in the... Obviously, this is cut content, right? There's going to be differences between the webtoon and the anime. Much to the point that Sung knew he didn't even have to be bothered by them anymore. The only thing he found himself thinking when he saw this was actually whether there'd be enough of them to level up with. Yeah, orange here in the this anime. Meant he couldn't take any damage while doing so, but that too was inconsequential to him. If anything, it was more just like an additional condition he needed to abide by. One more rule making his no-hit level up speed run a little bit harder. <laughs> Sung had actually timed how long it would take just to kill one of them, and to his surprise it was a how grand long? total of 17 seconds. That's the pretty fucking fast. The from only a few weeks ago were now being slaughtered in less than a minute, effectively <sighs> confirming his- A few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. That's crazy the amount of time that's passed. Like, it's been so short, bro. The season one has been a few weeks, and he's grown s That's the craziest thing, too! Within the span, like, his development, his change in physique and everything, like, over the course of a year, maybe, but like, a couple weeks, and he just changed like- the Well, his fucking appearance changed was like fucking overnight, right? After there was like one episode after Kasuka, where he's like, he started to change a little bit, and then he woke up in the nurse's, you know, the hospital, and then it was like, BOOM! Complete change, but- Damn, can't believe it's only been a few weeks. His strength was far greater than what it was when he fought the Cerberus. Part of this improvement came with his new critical attack skill, and it was that which made felling the centipede so much easier. In fact, I like it when people use fell as a verb to kill people, right? It's been felled. Igris hasn't felled. I don't know. It's like old language that I hear in like Elden Ring. The number of times he used it had actually caused it to level up right here. It was four hours later that Sung would be level 51 now, and in addition to purchasing Nightkiller for its situational damage buff, he'd also purchased wrappings in order not to lose it, after having lost the teleportation stone earlier. Wrapping? Sticky hands? He keeps losing the fucking teleportation rug. I think this is fucking- it's not a coincidence anymore. I think the author's fucking trolling us. Wrappings? Bro is just gonna fucking tape the fucking rock in his hand? It's fucking- that's what he's doing? You're on. Sung decided it would be best to err on the side of caution now. He doesn't want to drop the dagger, yeah? Like he was just wrapping his hands, but... But in the... I, I guess this would be literally, like, one thing. Just all wrapped up. Okay. In actuality, he was wrapping Night Killer to his hand. Huh. It was a precautionary measure which... You've purchased he bandages. Drop. He considered doing the same for Kasuka's fang with his left hand, but rather than fight like he was some kind of necromorph, Sung figured it would be a bit too inconvenient to lose both his hands. <laughs> That's funny. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. During the fight against Igris, we had like a scene where Sung Jin Mu had a knife. He attacked in one hand and then it disappeared, right? It got put back in the inventory. Then he summoned it again. There was like a switch happening, right? There, I remember that. So like if he loses knife, right? If he, if he somehow drops a knife. Can he not automatically just put that shit back into the inventory? I would have to rewatch that sequence of events. Did he actually just like have the knife in his hand, open the fucking menu, he put it there, and then he summed it from the menu again? Or the equipment inventory? I don't know. Because like I feel like the bandage is fucking pointless if you have this system where without touching it, without putting it away, you can just put it in your equipment inventory and just summon it back. He would then test out Ruler's hand to see what he could and couldn't manipulate with it, and the extent of that was limited by his proficiency with it. Ruler's hand, right. The mechanics right. behind it were simply an advanced- Or it's called a commander's touch in- Wait, is Igris called a knight's commander? He was like Igris the blood red, right? I don't even know what blood red means. It's like blood red. Blood and the color red right after. Uh, it, I, 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 I like uh, Ruler's hand more. I think it sounds cool. Right? It's the same shit. A commander's touch. Commander's Touch sounds fucking weird. Commander's Touch straight up sounds kind of weird, bro. Sounds like I'm part of a fucking squadron, and the commander's trying to fucking touch me, doing some weird shit, bro. I like Ruler's Hand now that I think about it. ...form of mana manipulation, so if Sung wanted to become better at using it, he first needed to become more familiar with mana in general. The easiest way to perceive it is as Sung using mana to take control of something. 
The man is dispersed from the surrounding air, and it's then wrapped around whatever object Sung wants to manipulate. Okay, it's like that a fluid. object would then be caught in a strong field of magical energy, and it would only move if Sung wanted it to. Given, of course, his proficiency is at it's a, a literal level. hand. Now, it was right before leaving the penalty zone that a prompt would come up indicating a change for the next one. What? Because you've hunted the penalty zone, next penalty quest will be difficult to be adjusted, so stronger centipedes will show up. Sure, just more fucking EXP for us. To be honest, sounds fucking great. Well, if they were all red. Well, we killed the orange guys in like 17 seconds, so even if they're red now, I bet we could like survive. And we leveled up so much here. I feel like maybe just not doing the daily quest is the best way to level up in this game then, huh? Because he had hunted in this one, the next penalty quest was gonna be harder. Its difficulty would be adjusted. It's almost like an instance dungeon every day if you get the penalty and if you're able to hunt the newly adjusted. Uh, maybe it scales. Maybe it gets stronger and stronger and stronger to the point where we can't hunt anymore. To a more appropriate level for him. Sung shuddered at the thought of what that might entail, but perhaps it was something he may never actually have to find out. It was when Sung was fighting the knights after this that a slight distinction needs to be made about them. Reason being that the way the anime portrayed them made it seem like they were each their own individual entities. This wasn't actually the case though, since an observation of their behavior revealed that they were all nothing but puppets. Empty who was controlling? All being controlled by the mages who had summoned them. Right. So, so long as the mages' spells continued, so too would the knights continue to move as well. If they were to stop and cast something else, then all the knights would pause and be lifeless again. It was a revelation Sung had come to when he used his stealth skill since the activation of the recon spells made all the knights go stationary. At first he thought it was simply because they had lost track of him, but in actuality it was because no one was controlling them anymore. They had lost connection to the mana pulling their strings, and that in turn made them like cars without a driver. Huh. The stealth actually... Yeah, there was a point in the anime where you use stealth and it's like, oh, we're hidden now, and then... Yeah, it wasn't actually the case, because the wizards, the mages, were actually controlling them and let go of the control to do other shit. One of the coolest things, just visually, aesthetic-wise, is whenever, like, these, when Sung Jin Mu went stealth, and then you see, like, these, like, eyes open in midair. It happened a couple times. I can't find it right now, but you know what I'm talking about. The mages would, like, basically cast a vision over the area with the eyes, and it would pop up, and they would kind of detect us. Them like cars without a driver. This was immediately confirmed after Sung had managed to kill one of the mages, since the moment it died, a large portion of the knights chasing him just dropped. There were a few hundred of them that instantly collapsed into an empty set of armor again. This made the mages the number one priority, as it turned the quest from one versus an army to one versus five. It had pretty much been one versus five from the very beginning. But we just didn't so know. It was as Sung would cut his way to Ooh, those that's five a cool that panel. the manual would show how it is Night Killer was perfect for this. In one panel, we see Kasuka's straight edge bouncing off the armor, whereas the next it's Night Killer cutting right through it. Ah. This is because Night Killer's serrated edge prevents it from sliding the same way that Kasuka's does. Does Kasuka's knife just get power crab by Night Hunter? Well, it's more suited specifically for knights. I mean, it's called fucking Night Hunter or Night Slayer, so like, I think it makes sense. Its jagged sawtooth blade allows it to bite into the tougher materials. This is a neat detail highlighting the two okay, cool, differences, cool. and I like that it's not just showed via the stats. What I mean is that they could have just designed a cool dagger and said it was- Never would have even thought about it. This is such a minor detail, so specific. I guarantee you no one even fucking thought about this, right? It's probably thinking, oh, a new weapon. All right, it's good against knights, cool, but cool to see that it actually did have these edges that we see in the anime as well, right? And just, I just, I, I was too fucking caught up in like, when's your eyes gonna happen? They could have just designed a cool dagger and said it was effective against knights, but instead, Night Killer was designed with application in mind. An interesting- Yeah, and the hand just completely wrapped up against, you know, the, the knife. Detail I only had an appreciation for after seeing these two panels here. Cool. This gave Sung an appreciation for his purchase. Most people would never probably even like be able to understand what's going on here, right? Because they're just reading it. They just see it as like, oh, maybe he just kind of dodged it, right? I don't know. You see the claim, but I don't know. Maybe it was like a bad hit. Maybe then like kind of dodged it. And then this one swiped in, but it's like very careful attention to detail. As well, because from what he knew about video games, shop items weren't usually anywhere near this useful. He knew the best items could only True. ever be found by going out into the wild. True. There's never been a place where you buy fucking... NPC shop merchant weapon, and it's like best in slot. No shot. Those are like fucking. What is even the point sometimes of those shots? No one fucking buys them, bro. Straight up. Sometimes, like, like, 
if you get, if you go get a weapon crafted, that's totally different. But to straight up buy a weapon, they're like from like a, a merchant in shop, like a, like a village, it's never good. So for Night Killer to be so much stronger than his last dagger, Sun found himself thinking gold was a lot more valuable than he initially thought it to be. It clearly provided far better weapons than any he could purchase. What the fuck is Gravity Blade, bro? Cocutus Hammer. I mean, Gravity Blade is 4.5 million gold. Must be the best one, right? I don't know. Maybe it, it fucking gravity, right? It just has the properties of gravity. Just from the real world. Leading Sung to wonder how much money he could make if he just bought out the shop then sold those items. Is that possible? I thought these items disappear in someone else's hands. Since they didn't have the same non-transferable oh, as his potions, wait. the equipment from the shop weren't limited to only his possession. Really? So this idea was both completely valid and extremely profitable. Of course, this wasn't what Sung should have been thinking about since- Nah, that's fair. Okay, so we farm gold in these dungeons, in these instance dungeons. We got a separate side of currency. We use the shop, empty out the shop. I don't know if it's even emptyable. I don't think there was an amount of quantity that you could buy, right? So just keep buying and sell it in the real world. God damn. God damn. All right, now we're making money because like we couldn't do that with the potion, right? Because the potion just disappears if someone, you know, I, I think any said that these are like untradeable, right? But the weapons though, okay, it's fair game. I mean, do we really need the money? Straight up. Do we need the money after Jinho's fucking offered us so much? Don't we, it, it, doesn't he have like fucking like 20 something million? Was it 50 million? 20 million? I don't know. In, in that ballpark, you're already so fucking loaded. You don't have to, have to ever think about money again, dude. Since the entire time he was still fighting the knights, mowing them down as he inched closer and closer to the mages. There was clearly a far less serious approach than before, though, since even when the mages worked together to summon that massive golem, Sung was neither intimidated nor worried. He was simply impressed at how cool their magic was. Impressed and eager to finally get to the end of all this. Bro's Mon glazing them up. More serious tone from the anime, though, and even has him get stabbed from behind oh! at one point. He had also learned a new... What the fuck? How'd he survive... No, 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 no. They do this, but I guarantee it's just a side, right? It looks like he got pierced right in the middle, but the way that the um stab, you know, the like font kind of like obscure it, and you can kind of see the edge here. I bet it's just a fucking fake out. And the next panel, it's just his side, dude. From behind at one point, he had also learned a new skill called dagger toss, but that was simply a result of him throwing his dagger that one time. I learned a new skill. It's called dagger toss, yeah? What, 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 do, you, what do you do? Yeah, yeah, I, I throw the dagger. Is that really a skill? I got the, all right, all right, all right, all right. I, I got this new skill called run. What, what, what is that? I, 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 instead of walking, I run. Now dash is different. Dash is like, you know, use mana. It's like, phew, and then you will, you know, you, you go fast, but like dagger throw really? Really, bro? Like, come on now. The actual ability just applies bonus damage whenever a dagger is thrown. 30 mana required for daggers only because it's called dagger toss. Throwing your dagger will inflict damage on your opponent. You will be able to inflict more damage at a higher accuracy as the level of the skill rises. Are we going to actually level this shit up? So it's really nothing all that special. Now. The job quest would finish pretty much as we saw, and the system would bring up all the prompts exactly as they appeared in the anime. The what Angel started out as words Sung couldn't agree more with quickly turned into confusion and eventually straight up panic. This is pretty much the same as the anime, yeah. Panic. By the time the class had been revealed, Sung was literally going through the five stages of grief. Because he thought this, this class fucking sucked, right? Because he's like, oh shit, dude. Necromancer. I've invested all my stats into everything, but the ones that I need to be a fucking necromancer, right? But I, again, I feel like his intentional way of saying necromancers don't need strength, you know, they, they traditionally don't need that shit, right? But that is also the biggest weakness because like if you play any game, necros are usually pretty limited in mobility, right? They're, they got like a skeleton, they got golems, like especially in Diablo, they got, they got golems, they got skeleton knights, you know, zombies, all, all that shit. And sure, they can do the work for you. It's like a one-man army, right? But it's like, sometimes it's nice to have that extra mobility to be able to kind of do it your style. So even in like games like Diablo, there's like different skill builds where instead of relying on like minions and mobs, right, and summoning, you can actually use a dagger. You can straight up use a dagger and just like be fully uh, independent through different, you know, fucking necromancer skills that, fuck, I don't know, fucking dagger toss and shit like that, right? So I 
feel like we are covering all our weaknesses. He's thinking that it's been wasted. But right now, I'm thinking this is the best thing that we could have ever fucking done. Now, it sucks that we don't have int right now, but we can just pour all the fucking skill points into int, right? And I'm sure there's going to be fucking other weapons and fucking different gears, right? You've already seen how different stat bonuses are applied to different gears. Maybe we just got to go farm out some, I don't know, a dungeon. We got lucky. Like, let's go to the demon castle. What's in the bad demon castle? Maybe they got some int gear, man, and then it'll give us more int. He was so distraught that denial, anger, bargaining, and depression all came and went. It wasn't so much the fact that Necromancer just didn't fit Look at his this, build, looks though, cool. but was instead a problem of how he'd be perceived by society. You see, oh. if his army truly was to be composed of the undead, then by that logic it would mean his soldiers would be made of bones and corpses. Would look kind of scary. But they're not zombies, they're like shadows, whatever the fuck they mean. I mean, it's a literal shadow. They, they just become like knights, shadow knights. I don't know. This would definitely not sit well with anyone in the real world since a hunter leading an army of death wasn't, well, marketable. In a world where society treats hunters as celebrities, what? the hunter Sung wanted to become had no place for this type of incompatibility. I can't believe he was even thinking about shit like that. It's like, oh my god, if I become a necromancer, ain't no way I can get in the fucking magazine cover shoot with Cha Hei In. I can't get on the front page. This is terrible in terms of aesthetics, okay? I, I thought he was just fucking upset about his stat allocation, but he was actually thinking that ahead? This is why he rejected it the first time, but with a little convincing, Sung was able to see past this. I can't believe the system, after we said no, it's like, are you sure? Nah, try again. Yes or no? It's like, no. Are you sure? I try again. It's like, the system was like, nope. Nope, you will become this shadow monarch. Obviously, the system wanted him to consider otherwise, so when taking into account its constant push towards anything that makes him stronger, Sung knew it wouldn't offer him a class that wasn't powerful. In fact, if hidden classes were just hunters who had special abilities, then Sung knew for the most part those were mainly support class hunters. There were hunters who could buff others or create barriers, but it was very rare that you'd have an offensive ability like the one that Bake had. So, if this hidden class was being advertised as one- What the fuck is this skill? Similar to that, then perhaps- He just fucking like, yells and turns into like, beast mode. It's just typical beast man powers, right? You just, I don't know, fucking tiger man? White tiger, that's this fucking guild, right? White tiger, so... Can he actually turn into a white tiger too? I don't know. Perhaps Necromancer was more powerful than he thought. Perhaps it was being offered to him because the system knew he wanted more power. It was when he approached the class from a lens like that, that Sung's heart started to race at the prospect of what it could become. Like, if it truly was an opportunity to gain a special power all while in the combat class, then the level at which he could grow for himself was unimaginable. <laughs> yeah, look at that panel. The potential of what a frontline mage supported by an army was capable of. The idea of soloing B-rank gates and higher wasn't just a dream anymore. So Straight was... up, we don't need allies. Well, allies would be nice. But we don't, we, like, the guild that we're doing, like, we don't even need to recruit people. Sung Jinmu is literally a one-man guild now. He's a one-man army, right? Don't ask spoilers? Man, if you, <laughs> Jesus Christ, if you, you gotta be fucking new here to be saying shit like that, bro. Like, when I'm talking and I'm asking these questions, these are rhetorical questions that I ask myself to further the fucking conversation. If you're fucking so stupid that you can't even recognize that, why are you fucking here, dude? after considering the full extent of what this class meant for him that Sung would finally accept it and advance into the Shadow Monarch, a superior version of Necromancer he assumed he would have had to unlock anyway. <laughs> level 1 Necromancer goes to level 100 Shadow Monarch. He just got more hair. They're from, from Bali to fucking hair with the fucking better jacket, bro. Fortunately, he had earned it now, and along with it came the skills of Shadow Extraction and Shadow Storage. Shadow Extraction creates the soldiers by extracting mana from a recently deceased target, while Shadow Storage allowed them to be stored within his shadow. They can be summoned freely at zero cost to him, then absorbed back whenever he wanted. Absorbed back? So they literally just go back into the shadow. Storage. I'm not sure what it means. 20 shadows, right? It's like it's 20 limit right now. And then I remember, in order to summon Igris, we had to like free off like five shadows, right? Or something like that. So it's like we summoned them. It's like, sorry, you're already been sacrificed. The number he can store is always less than the number he can Was it extract, 11? But if there was ever a time when... Why the fuck do we even remember a number like that? There is no reason to remember such an arbitrary, trivial number like that. But you motherfuckers memorized it. Why? 
Just, there's no shot, like, 20, the 20 storage is a pretty even number. It's a pretty even number. I think that's fair enough to say it's, it's fair. I, I, I think a 20 storage is fine, but like, actually it was 11. <laughs> it's, I, 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 no, I'm not arguing that it wasn't 11. I'm saying, like, why the fuck do you know it's still 11? It's such a small, minor, trivial thing. Y'all are fucking spending your time studying this fucking anime when you should be fucking studying for school instead. Imagine if you use this dedication. Imagine if you use this effort into paying attention to this trivial fucking thing into your own real life in school. Just imagine the powers you could unlock if you did that! A battlefield was riddled with targets for shadow extraction. Those extra numbers would certainly make a difference, even if they were only going to be present for that battle specifically. Sung would then inspect his shadows and test their obedience, and to his surprise, they My were leech. far more corporeal than he imagined. The armor they wore wasn't just for show, as upon his touch he could feel metal. The same went for their weapons too, so it was as if the knights were the same but Knight just in shadow yet. form. Igris's extraction went Whoa, Igris is like right in front of them all, huh? That's so cool. That 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 is so cool, dude. Igris's extraction went a little different from the anime because unlike how the anime Pokeball. made it seem like Igris was rejecting him, the novels described it as the other way around. Hmm. Sung knew his chances were likely all just based on probability, but he felt for some reason perhaps he just wasn't expressing enough desire. He felt perhaps it was him who just wasn't trying hard enough. Really? He, him, was he intimidated? Igris did fucking toss his salad for like an episode and a half. So, it was after Sung would close his eyes and focus that his next look at Igris would show something peculiar. The black mm -hmm. smoke which was emanating from his corpse clearly and visibly outstretched itself as if reaching towards Sung. Sung could never be certain for sure, but it was almost as if Igris was reaching his hand towards him. Almost like he was holding it out as if to ask Sung to rescue him. Okay. This is a stark difference from the denial and subsequent plea in the anime, but I respect both since they're equally fitting. I hmm. mean, Sun's speech may have been a bit more epic in the anime, but I like the idea of Igris not wanting his essence to be lost to the void too. I imagine it relates to the sounds of pain he heard from the other shadows, so perhaps the state he did? in when they're waiting for extraction is a kind of sentient limbo. Were they making noises? Were they saying like, kill me? One where the only two options are to become a shadow soldier or turn to nothing. It would explain how it is Igris was able to make the kind of expression he did. Now, it was when Igris did finally get extracted that his level was 7 and rank knight. The enhanced level was- Right, the rank knight's very interesting, right? So there's a separate ranking system for the shadows now. Result of shadow strengthening and this was simply a buff that could occur upon extraction sometimes. As for his rank, this simply meant he was strong enough to gain the privilege of being okay. named. It was the minimum rank required to earn such a thing. Named. Igris. But the other shadows are just NPC soldiers. Who named Igris? Igris was already Igris. Hmm. I... Hmm. Because I, I, like we're watching so much Isekai where it's like, you know, we name monsters and the monsters fucking evolve, but like, they're already named, right? So if you're strong, you're already like a named monster, and you start up minimum knight grade. Igris is minimum knight grade. Did a system name Igris? Good question. Good question. Because Igris did come from this instance dungeon. Also, what about the throne? Why isn't he not talking about the fucking throne? There's only fucking like 30 seconds left, bro. But yeah. That was what about the throne? The of solo leveling. It's over there, the throne! Season 2's already been confirmed, and I suspect it will be out either in October or January. Overall, I October or January. So, we'll have to... So maybe by the end of this current, you know, um, this, this new anime season just started, right? We got three months, and then we go into summer, and then maybe we'll get, like, a trailer, right? We'll get another trailer confirming, like, season 2, October release. And if not, then another season on top of that. And then it's like season two, January release. Could be pretty cool, well, yeah. I think the anime did a fantastic job, so ooh, I can't ooh, wait to ooh, see ooh, more ooh, of what ooh, ooh, ooh. To That's gotta be the, my favorite scene, though. I think this might become its new baby like how Sorted Online did. Now, don't forget the level up. Check out the merch, guys. And is that it from Mr. Any News? I think it is. Mugen Project, y'all know what to do. Guys, please go give Mr. Any News a subscription. Like this 
videos if you did. He always gives us such great content about things that we watch, but the stuff that's cut out. And I think with Slime and with Shoko Tensei on its way, I think it's, start, it's time to start farming those videos from Annie News as well. If you got any recommendations on what you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. That's it for me.